Turn this down. Oops. Hey, everybody. Am I here yet? Let's see. <clears throat> it says it's starting. Let's see if it's actually going to work. Hey, everybody. What's happening, man? Let's see how many of you cats actually show up. <laughs> Let's see who shows up. Let me get down to my chat room here. So I'm doing it. This is just a, a live stream experiment with some new camera gear and some new stuff going on. And so I just wanted to check this out and see what it actually looks like on YouTube when it's recorded. Um, that's really what I'm looking to do to see what exactly. Okay, it's no delay. That's pretty good. I wanted to see exactly what it's going to look like with the new camera, new lens that I rented. Hey, Johnny, what's up, bud? Truckster. Hi, we live, brother. Edgar, how are you? Video frame rate's really slow. Yeah, that's odd. Um, I'm playing with some settings in OBS. Let me... Uh, let me try to, oh, I may have to stop the stream though if I do that. I changed some settings. Let me see if I can change them. That might be me. Video, oops. Yeah, I don't know if I can do this on the fly. I'm gonna try it though. I don't know if it'll let me do it. I don't know if it's going to knock me off and let me do it or what. We'll see. Um, hold on. What I'm doing is, uh, that should be okay. I don't know if it'll improve. You'll have to tell me. Oh, did I go? Did it go? Did it crap out? It might have. <laughs> it might have. Let's see. Oop. Stop streaming. We'll try this again. We will try this again. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. Let me know if... Uh, hey, Malcolm, what's up, bro? Hey, Johnny, let me know if the uh, frame rate's better. I switched something in OPS, and I guess it booted me off. I was playing around with some settings. Let me know if the frame rate is any better. Good now? Edgar, thanks, bro. Okay, so I know what I did wrong. Hey, I'm learning. So... Malcolm said that's better. Truckster says we're back. Excellent. Okay, so um, again, I don't know if it's going to buffer or not. We're going to have to see. I see it buffering on my screen here, but you know who knows. Um, yeah, I see it buffering. You know, I'm also doing some other stuff on my computer right now, which might be part of the problem. I'm doing something in Final Cut Pro, <laughs> so that's probably the problem. Um, but anyway. Um, we're going to, I'm just, I'm testing out some new stuff. So I got a new camera that I'm working on upgrading my webcam. Um, I'm doing some different settings in OBS. Yeah, I know Johnny says it's frozen. I can see that it's frozen. I'm not really sure why that is. It could be because I'm doing something else in Final Cut. Um, that might be, re that might be the reason. What if I refresh it? I won't do anything, I don't think. Stop streaming. Let me walk down my chat room here. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you guys can see me. I don't know if you can hear me. I know there's a lag over YouTube. That's always pretty uh, pretty common. Um, let me see. Hopefully it won't freeze. It doesn't look like it's freezing now. So anyway, so um, I was doing something in Final Cut Pro, rendering some video, and that might have been the problem too. I probably got way too much going on here. Um, you said it's buffering a little, Edgar. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that is. It could be because I'm shooting in 4K. So let me tell you, let me see if I can. Yeah, it is buffering, man. That really, that really is strange. That might be a 4K thing. Uh, I see that it's buffering. That's not good, man. That's not good. I wonder if it's because I'm shooting in 4K. That might be part of the problem.
Yeah, I can see that it's, what if I were to refresh this, what happens? I'm looking at everything wirelessly on my MacBook Pro here. So some of you say it finds, I see a buffering on my ends. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to try this. I don't know what you guys have heard anyway. So I'm just doing an experiment. So if this freezes up, um, you know, we'll talk later. I'll choose some more settings. I upgraded my webcam to a, DS a DSLR camera and I'm checking out some new lenses and I'm shooting in a high resolution 4K video with a capture card and all that stuff. So I'm trying to turn my real high end camera that I bought that I make for my um, videos into my webcam. And so I'm trying to check it out with OBS. I was changing some of the settings in OBS based on some research that I did on YouTube to try to get the best quality video that I can get. Um, and I don't, and I wanted to see how this was going to come out over YouTube because I can't do live streams if I, you know, can't figure this out. So I'm doing this as kind of an experiment. Um, so first and foremost, let me know before it freezes up again, how does the, I don't know, I'm going to compare this later on to some old live streams that I've done to see if the, the video quality is any better. I'm still messing around with some lighting and that's part of my problem. I don't have the lighting dialed in yet and everything is about the lighting. Um, but, um, I went from a, a $60 Logitech webcam to a, you know, $2,000 Sony DSLR camera. I got the Sony a7 III. Uh, full frame mirrorless camera and right and I'm experimenting with some lenses I had rented some lenses from a, um, a, a store online and I'm running a 10 to a 16 mil 10 to an 18 millimeter Sony lens um, right now I think it said it's 16 mils um, and I'm adjusting the lighting and stuff to try to figure out how this is all going to kind of work so one of the things that I, um, I wanted to do um, okay, you guys are saying it's fine. Great. So the frame rate looks okay. So one of the things that I was doing some research in OBS, because I'm not, I'm not an expert in OBS, as most of you probably know, <laughs> um, to, to try to figure out, am I, did I have my video settings set up properly with my webcam and now for the DSLR? And some people that, uh, told me to increase the bit rate. And I think that's where, Johnny, you were saying the, the, the framing was really slow. So I lowered it back down to where it was before. And now it seems to be okay. Um, so that was probably part of the problem. The other thing that I'm doing differently today um, or trying out is I'm not shooting in 1080p anymore. I'm shooting in 4K, which is super high resolution with a, an Elgato capture card. Um, and I'll eventually go through all the specifics if any of you guys are interested in how these videos are made um, into my 2013 Mac Pro, which again is a killer computer. But when you start trying to work with some of this high resolution video, that computer is about six years old. So I'm interested to see how this is going to kind of work. Um, and so let me just step down here and check out the chat. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, the new camera looks like I lost some weight. No, well, no, it's not. Well, thanks, Edgar. <laughs> yeah, I lost weight about three years ago. Um, and so, yeah, it's not the new camera. The new camera probably highlights that I'm getting older too. Um, I don't know if the video quality looks uh, really good or how does it look to you guys? Um, like I said, I'm working with the lighting. Um, it's a little challenging because I got OBS up on my TV, a, t a regular television, and, I, and it looks like I'm a little blown out, a little overexposed. But when I bring it onto my computer monitor, it looks okay. So I have to make sure that my computer monitor is calibrated in a way so when I'm doing all these adjustments, what I think it's going to look like over YouTube is really what it's going to look like over YouTube, if you know what I mean. I'm still learning all this stuff, guys. So, um, you know. I'm working on it. Uh, Johnny says, the question is, can your internet upload speed handle 4K? Yes, very much. So I got a super, super fast uh, internet connection. I can inter I can upload, I think it's about almost 40 uh, megabits a second. Um, I pay for a real high speed internet connection, not only for the studio, but for my when my wife works from home and she tele teleports into her work, she needs a real high internet, fast internet speed. So yes, it can handle 4K. I checked out those specs. Now I can lower it to 1080p, but I just wanted to try it in 4K to see what it can handle. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm working on now. But what I'm learning is, um, and again, it, it's been a it, it's been it's been a it's been a fiasco <laughs> this whole video thing learning about video and I know Johnny you and I have uh had talked a little privately about some of the stuff I did and I'm planning on doing a video or a couple of videos on YouTube uh, maybe showing and kind of talking about my 
um, video creation journey, if you will, as it pertains to gear and getting good quality stuff and trying to improve and those kinds of things. Because some uh, folks have emailed me and asked me what I use, how did I do it? And I'm not an expert by any means. Um, uh, I think of this whole video camera thing and how to be good at that craft. I'm trying to take the same approach as I do when I tell you guys and try to teach you guys how to be a good mixing engineer and mastering engineer. You know, I'm, 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 I'm taking my own advice. I'm, I'm buying some online training. I'm trying to look, I'm trying to learn from people that are much better at it than me. Some of the stuff I'm learning for, from, um, for free on YouTube and some of the stuff I'm paying for, uh, you know, with courses and stuff, just like you cats buy courses from me, I'm buying courses from other people to try to learn how to do this. Um, but just like mixing, it, it's a craft, man, really understanding camera and lenses and lighting and, and all the different settings in the camera and how to make the picture look a certain way and then making sure that all matches up, uh, as Johnny Lipsham uh, was saying, um, with your computer and your internet speed to make sure it all kind of jives because you can have the most high tech, best camera gear in the world and if you don't have the right internet connection, like Johnny mentioned for live streaming or if you don't have the right computer to be able to process that stuff with the right video cards and you don't have you know obs set up properly as i was just finding out um what ends up happening is you know you really don't get any better you end up spending a lot of money and you don't know how to use all the stuff and it's kind of like buying plugins right you can buy all the plugins in the world but if you don't know what you're doing it really doesn't matter how good the plugin is. It's not the gear. It's the person using the gear, right? So I'm 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 learning like a beginner mixer is. I'm learning that in videography. So um, and it's cool, man. I, I'm enjoying it, and I've learned a lot. And what I what I have learned um, for people that want to know um, is that um, it's all about lighting, man. You got to have the right lighting um, in the right way at the right strategic places. Um, and I learned a lot about soft boxes and making sure you just don't, you know, if you just have some cheap $5 Amazon LED panel shine and hit you right in the face, it doesn't have a nice soft box to break the light up and soften it up and having things at the right angles and stuff, you won't look right. It won't look right. Um, the good news is um, when you're sitting like I am stationary like this, once you get it set up once and you get it, you know, kind of permanently set up you don't have to set it up again. So I'm in the middle of trying to figure all that out. So I figured I'd come on here for two reasons. One, I just wanted to say hello. Two, I wanted to um, make sure that I can stream in 4K because <laughs> I've never done it before. And I wanted to see how this was gonna look on YouTube. So let me see what you guys are up to. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'll, I'll scroll back up here. Um, uh, man, I gotta increase the... I bought this new MacBook Pro. Okay, I got to I got to increase the font, guys, so I can see the the damn thing. I'm getting old. All right, hold on. Let me let me scroll back up now that I can see the chat a little bit better. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, Edgar said the new camera looks like I lost some weight. I didn't lose any weight, at least not from the last time you saw me till today. <laughs> it's not but if the camera makes me look thinner, right on, man. For the amount of money I spent on this camera, it better make me look thinner. Uh, Tony says, hello. Hey, Tony, what's up, bro? Uh, Deer Creek Audio. Hey, Dave, I use an Elgato Cam Link, and it works great. Yep, I have the um, the Cam Link 4K, the new one that came out. Um, that's the one that everyone or a lot of folks seem to use. And again, being a novice, I went and said, and this is how I did it. Um, I found three or four video vloggers and video guys, photography guys on YouTube I really, really like. And they do tutorials on how they set all their gear up. And some of them have way high-end gear, way beyond what I can afford. But I use a lot of their principles. So I found three or four channels of guys I really enjoy. I really like the way their videos look. And when they talk about what they use and how they set it up. I just go out, you know, and get the stuff. So the uh, Elgato um, Cam Link, as you said, um, was one that everybody seems to use. And if I want to do 4K, I got the new one for 4K capture card, and it seems to be working. Plug and play works really cool. Uh, Johnny says, can your internet handle 4K? Yes, it can. Uh, yeah, my upload speed should be able to no problem. Uh, let's see. Looking good, man. Thank you. Um, Deer Creek Audio says 4K may be a way seen as YouTube is only doing 1080p 60 frames. Yeah, I've 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 read and uh, and have heard that as well. Um, and you might be right about that. I'm still learning about that. So you're right. It may be um that you just stream in 1080 60 
frames per second because that's what YouTube's doing it to it anyway. Um, but then other people say that if you they'll downscale it from 4K to 1080p, and sometimes that downscaling will be a little bit better quality than if you just went 1080p straight up to YouTube. But again, I'm still a novice, so I don't know that for sure. But if I figured if my can if my camp my uh, internet and my computer can handle 4K, then anything I throw at it, it's going to be able to handle. So good point. Th thank you for. Oh, and if any of you guys are doing this stuff and you're beyond where I'm at, please any information you can give me to help me, I'd love to get some uh, some info from you guys. Uh, let's see. Tony says it doesn't look as high def as your other um, as your other other but <clears throat> it could be on my side well one of the things i'm learning um and what i'm trying to figure out tony is that when i when you go back and look at some of my or just go to <clears throat> excuse me just go to my home recording made easy site and look at any of the videos that are on there any of the promo videos like on the home page or if you go over to the services page i just shot a a promo for my skype services and for my mixing services those are shot on a dslr camera not even as good as this camera it was shot on my canon camera with a, um, with a great lens and with the right lighting positioned in the light in the right way, those videos to my eye, based on where, um, based on my experience are the best videos I ever shot and they look great. This doesn't look quite as good as that. And I agree with that. Now I'm trying to figure out why my first inclination is telling me it's because I don't have the right lighting. I don't use, I'm not using the same kind of lighting as I use when I produce those videos. When I produce, when, excuse me, when I produce those videos, um, and you can't see it off camera. Well, actually I could probably, I've scaled this down. Let me, let me, let me widen this for a second. I want to show you guys something. Cause I got like a real wide lens on this, although you won't be able to see it. It's, it's too far over, but I have, you know, again, as part of the learning process for myself, um, when I was trying to figure out, well, how do I get those videos on my website to look that good? And I went out and started buying cameras and stuff again. The one thing that I learned is that the type of lighting you use is key. And the way, you, and so I went out and bought, and it's right over here to my, uh, to my right, your left, I bought an aperture light, which is what all the professionals use um, for photography and videography. And it was pretty expensive, but it's the it's the one main light that I have with a huge, I want to say it's probably a, a three foot or two and a half foot round so dome, big dome, big soft box. And as soon as I started using that light with my DSLR camera, the videos were spectacular. I mean, again, it might to where I'm at compared to what I was doing those videos looked awesome and I learned right away the lens and the camera matter but the lighting is almost just just as important if not more so um I'm not using that light right now because the way my studio is set up that dome light could never fit here I have to get different type of lighting so I think part of the thing that you're that you're seeing uh Tony is I don't have the right lighting. Again, I'm using like table lights and stuff and they're, they're kind of, it looks like I'm a little overexposed. I got to get the right lighting in the right place. And then I also don't know how much of that is OBS and streaming to YouTube. I, I, I don't know. Um, although, like I said, I see a lot of live streamers on YouTube. I go to a lot of gaming channels. I'm not a big gamer, but if you want to see guys that, some guys that really know how to shoot video and stream, go watch gaming channels. And their video looks much better than, than what I think mine's coming across right now. So I'm still trying to learn that. Um, but I know I have to get better lighting. Uh, let's see. Uh, Deer Creek Audio says, your lighting is the same. What's new with the camera? Okay, the lighting is the same that it was with the webcam. The only difference is these lights, um, I'm able to, um, they're actually, um, they're dimmable and they can change colors and stuff. So I, I've got them more, um, more white and not so much yellow. So um, this time. So, but other than that, the lighting is the same, and that's part of the problem. The camera that I have is um, is a Sony um, A7 III mirrorless uh, DSLR, and right now I'm using a kit lens, an 18, oh no, 10 to 18 millimeter, and it's sitting right up where my right where my webcam normally is. Um, and right now I think it's set at 16 millimeters to get me the width that I want. And actually this is a lot wider. I've cropped this in. I wasn't sure what, um, what, what focal point I was going to need. Um, and I'm working on the camera settings, um, playing with the ISO, playing with the picture profile to get the colors right. So that's what I'm working on. Um, 
Edgar says, I don't see an improvement in the video quality. I know for sure we show your events. I'll know for sure when we show events on Studio One. Yeah, um, well, what I'm hoping is, well, when I get this all dialed in and looking the way I want it to look, all my tutorials, all my YouTube videos, everything will be shot on this camera. The web camera will eventually go away. So again, just working on it, you know? Uh, Peace Valley Audio. Hey, Mike says, I thought the coaching call was at seven. That's tomorrow. I'm just here doing an impromptu. This is not the coaching call. I know you saw the thing on the, on the YouTube channel because I set it up for tomorrow, um, but this is not the Mixing Made Easy coaching call. That's tomorrow night. Uh, let's see. Tony. Uh, Tony says, yeah, it's on my side. Looks good, David. Okay, good. Again, I, I'm, you know, I hope, I hope it doesn't look worse than a webcam. That's for sure. After all the money I just spent. <laughs> But I know, I know, because I shot um, last night, and I just shut down Final Cut Pro. I think that was part of the reason why it was buffering before I had Final Cut Pro. Uh, I was also filming my band's rehearsal the other night with this camera, with a with another kit lens, a Sony kit lens, not a real high end lens, and I filmed about an hour and a half worth of rehearsal last night, uh, along with some GoPro cameras, a multi camera shoot. And um, I was editing that video before I came on, and the video quality coming out of this same camera on that is looks 10 times better than what I got I think I going on the screen right now. So I know it's the camera and everything is is proper. It's I think it's again the way the lighting is, the positioning in it of it is um I think most of it's just the lighting cuz that's the only thing that's changed. Um the lens is different. I'm using a a um a different lens on it right here, but the lens that I was using last night quality-wise it's it's a Sony kit lens. They're not real high-end lenses. Um, but that video came out spectacular. But as I said, I had the big dome light that was on the band. I had another dome light, which you could probably see behind me in the very back at the top of the screen above my right shoulder. You'll see a, a softbox right where I'm pointing up there. You can see it in the dark there. Uh, there's another LED with a softbox. So I had, you know, that LED with a big soft box coming in on one side of the band, this big dome light coming in on the other side of the band, and the lighting was right. So that video came out killer looking. Um, and so I know if I can do that with in the other ha the other half of the studio, I could do that here. I just got to figure it all out. So anyhow, uh, let's see. I'll scroll back up here. Oh, boy. Missed a bunch of people. Sorry about that. I'm going to scroll up. I'll get it. Okay. Uh, the audio in the picture may be out a few milliseconds sync, but nothing we can't live with. Yep. That's something I can set in OBS. I just got to figure that out. That happens when you shoot in 4k. Sometimes I'm, I've, I've, I've read and told and there's a way you can offset that. Um, I don't, yeah, I could see it on my, I'm looking at OBS. I can see it's probably off a hair and that's something I can probably fix. Um, but yeah, it's not too, too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah. Deer Creek audio says, as you know, lighting is 95% of your quality. No question. And I, I didn't know that when I first got into this man, I thought it was all on the camera and the lenses. And, and that makes a big difference. I mean, it does. You, you you're not going to get the same quality out of a $60 Logitech webcam that you're going to get out of a $2,000 DSLR with a seven or $800 good lens on it. You're not. Um, but the lighting is, is key having the right kind of lighting put in the right places. And the good news is because I'm about maybe, I don't know, six, eight feet away from the front wall, maybe 10 feet, maybe eight feet. I have places where I'm going to put some wall mounts with some lighting brackets. And I'm going to get a couple of lights that just sit up there and I'm just going to have it done on a remote with a dimmer, much like my aperture light that I have over here. Um, and then that way I'll be able to just, you know, sit down, hit the button, turn them on. And once I get it dialed in and I know exactly what the brightness needs to be for this room, um, it'll work. I hope. <laughs> Uh, Edgar says, show your desktop and the video quality might show there. Um, oh, I mean, I could, I mean, I haven't set up, I'm, I'm going to be resetting up some of my scenes in OBS. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with live streaming. We're going to, we're going to be doing this. I'm doing all this shit for a reason, not just so we could get on here and I could talk to you every once in a while. We're going to, I'm going to be doing a lot more live streaming stuff, but I got to get the quality dialed in. But if I wanted to share my, let's see, like, uh. Let me open up Studio One here, and then I'll share it with you. And we'll play back something over Studio One just to see how it handles it. It should handle it fine. Let me just open it up, and then I'll share it. <laughs> 
<clears throat> and then also to the brightness of the monitor on my face, depending on if it's a white dark background, a dark background, that all makes a difference. <laughs> Yes, Deer Creek Audio. Audio is like video in so many ways. Watch out for gas. You ain't kidding, man. You ain't. You are not freaking kidding. It's just like it, it's it's just like learning. I was just saying that a few minutes ago. It is just like learning how to mix or in audio. Same thing. You got to have the same principles. You got to understand the details. You got to get the gear. You got to understand the gear. You got to understand your environment and how it works. Just like mixing, knowing your environment, right? Learning the room. It's the same thing. <laughs> It's the same thing. And it's fun. I mean, I like it. And I've already bought cameras and sold cameras. And I can explain that if anybody's interested. I had a Canon 80D that I bought six or seven months ago. All the videos on home recording made easier shot with a Canon um, 80, 80D DSLR, which is about five, six years old when that camera came out. And that's called the crop sensor camera. And those videos look spectacular. As I wanted to use that camera as a webcam and do some other things with live streaming, that camera won't do what I want it to do. But I didn't know that when I bought the camera because I didn't, I wasn't hip to all this stuff. So I'm selling that camera six months later and buying another, bought another camera to be able to do what I want to do. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me, let me, um, I don't want to bring up the coaching call for tomorrow because if you're not a part of MixingMadeEasy.net, it wouldn't be fair <laughs> for you guys to see that. Uh, let me see though. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll open up a session just so I can see if it's going to work. Uh, mixing lies plugin demo. Yeah, we can open up this one. Let's open up this. It's coming. Hold on. In the meantime, I'll answer a couple more questions. Yeah, Tony says, yeah, the lighting doesn't look the same. Uh, no, it's not. No, it, and it's not. It's not the same. Trust me. It's not the same as. Do you mean, Tony, it's not the same as the lighting? In what, on the videos that you see on Home Recording Made Easy, like my promo videos and stuff like that, if, if that's what you mean, you are 500% correct. It is not the same lighting, and that's the problem, I think. But we're going to rectify that as soon as my credit card, you know, <laughs> cool, cools down a little bit. Here, let me, share, let me share Studio One here with Picture in Picture. You guys should see Studio One now in a second. I know there's going to be a delay. And uh, let me move my little picture box up here. Let me know if you guys can see that okay. Uh, we could play back something here, I guess. Oh, you know, I gotta put headphones on if we're gonna do that. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, Deer Creek Audio, lighting on this, on this looks on the dark side and getting uh, an amount get on the dark side and getting an amount of video noise otherwise looks okay yeah because i have the iso turned up quite a bit on this camera um this camera the iso settings are not you know 1000 iso on this camera and 1000 iso on my canon are, look different on this camera probably for a lot of reasons one because it's a it's a this is a full um what they call it, full frame camera, much bigger sensor than in the Canon. I'm using a different lens. I was using a much more high end lens on the Canon. I was using a Sigma lens, which I did buy a Sigma lens for this camera. It'll be here on Tuesday. Um, and so I, that might make a difference. Um, so right now I got the ISO up, I think around 2000 or so, which I've never shot my Canon at an ISO of 2000. ISO just means for people who don't know, it's how, it's how wide the, how much light the sensor can pick up so the more you turn up the ISO, the more exposed or brighter your picture is going to be, but then the more noise, as Deer Creek Audio has alluded to, you'll start to see the distortion, you'll start to see some of the white noise in the picture, especially as you blow it up on a big screen. So you want to try to get a balance between lowering the ISO and then that pairing it up with the right lens, you know, that has a fast aperture. There's a, there's a few different things that go on. It's just like understanding how attack, release, threshold, and ratio work on a compressor. All those four controls work together to make something happen in audio. Well, ISO, aperture, or f-stop on your lens, the lighting, and a couple other things all work together to, to create the picture quality. So um, when I was shooting with my Canon, I was shooting at an ISO of about 400 
but I was using a lens that had a really, a really fast lens that let a lot of light in. So what that means is I can turn down the ISO so the picture looks really clean and sharp and there's no noise, but you still have the nice exposure that you need. This particular lens that I'm using right now does isn't nearly as fast of a lens as that Sigma lens that I have, and I'm rectifying that. Um, and plus, um, I also have the ISO right now up at around 2000, which is why you're seeing some of the noise. And because I don't have the right lighting, I have to turn up the ISO because if I turn down the ISO, it'll be black and you'll see a like a big black square and that's about it. But anyhow, let me, um, let me play back this uh, Studio One thing here for a second. Okay. And we'll see how it sounds or if it sounds, right? Let's try it. I don't know how that sounds to you guys. Can you guys hear that in Studio One? Okay, now I could start it again. Let me read some more questions. Um, let's see, Deer Creek Audio. If I'm not mistaken, OBS can do 30 frames a second, so 4K is getting dumbed down in OBS. Um, I think, I thought Deer Creek, and I, and I could be wrong, I gotta check my OBS settings. I thought you can set it to 60 frames a second, 59 point something. Um, Again, I got to do some more research on that. Got to do some more research. Again, what I'm doing is I'm going out to, like I said, some of these uh, cats on YouTube, the gaming guys that have really great video quality with their DSLRs that are using OBS, and most of them are. They're, they're not doing YouTube. They're uh, going over, I guess, this, this uh, gaming um, platform or a gaming streaming site called Twitch. I don't know much about it because I'm not a big gamer. Um, but anyway, trying to learn what the, how they set up their stuff and then trying to figure it out. Now, again, some of it has to do with also your limitations of your computer as well. So I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm trying though. Uh, 4K is good for editing, then you can reduce same as audio. Yeah, exactly, 4K is great for video editing because you can do stuff like zoom zins and you can do all kinds of stuff in post and the picture doesn't break down, you know? It's again, I, I kind of equate, 4K versus 1080p and all that resolution quantity, quantity quality to like bit rates with, um, with MP3s, you know, you can have 128 bit MP3 will sound okay, but you know, could sound kind of jarbled and it doesn't sound as clean as like 320, right? There is a definitely an audible difference. Um, and it's the same thing with resolutions. And again, I'm, I'm still learning. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave, I want to learn along with you, uh, with, along with your tips too, for sure. Share your experiences. Yeah, I, I, I would love to. I, like I said, I'm gonna put together a few. Once I get this part of it dialed in from the lighting perspective, so I can actually share and help somebody, I'm gonna do a multiple part video series. I was gonna do one long. I didn't want it to be too long. People may not watch it. But again, I, I don't know. I'm gonna do something for the YouTube channel. I'll put it on its own playlist. I'll create its own playlist for video for people, um, you know, and kind of tailor it to us studio guys that want to do either uh, tutorials, you know, recording your screen like you see here, you know, using OBS, using things like ScreenFlow, or if you're a Windows guy using something like Camtasia to, to capture your video tutorials, having the right camera, the right setup, and then people that also want to create video content for their websites or their studio business and stuff. So I will share that. I've learned an awful lot. And I'm, like I said, I am I am a novice still at this. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work. But um but uh, but when you when you when you break through and you get you you shoot something that looks really good to you um it really makes it worth it. And all the videos that I put on my home recording made easy website um, especially all the promo videos that I've done that I've talked about earlier. Um, those are the best videos I've personally have ever shot. I mean, a, a real, you know, pro would look at that and go, well, they're, you know, they pick it apart, you know, just like if I listen to someone's mix that has only been mixing for six months, it might be the best mix they've ever done. And that might be true, but someone that's been doing it a long time can find things that could be better. Right. And, but that's how you learn. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, so I'm going to share my experience with people and I'm sure you'll, you'll learn hopefully, and I can learn from you and hopefully there'll be some other people that will learn something as well too. Um, so anyhow, uh, Johnny Lipsham says that the latest version of OBS can handle 60 frames per second. Yeah, that, that's what I had thought, Johnny. That's what I had thought. Again, I don't know how much of, 
my guess is the lack of picture quality that we're seeing tonight has nothing to do with OBS. It has to do with the way I have things set up. Because like I said, you go watch cats on YouTube that or on Twitch that stream live, 90% of them are using OBS and they have stellar quality face cams and video cams, stellar. I mean, kick ass stuff. And if they're using OBS and some of them are using a Mac and some of them are using a PC, but OBS is OBS regardless. And they're using the same cam. I mean, the reason why I bought this camera was because a lot of the top guys use this camera um, and it does some of the things I wanted to do. Um, so if they can use it, if they can get that quality with OBS in this camera, then I could get that quality too. I just have to learn how to set it up. And again, I keep going back to, I think, I think it's the lighting, but we'll fix that. Uh, let's see. Uh, whoops. I've lost some of the chat here again. Sorry guys. Sorry guys. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Where am I? Oh, okay. Your picture isn't full frame either. My Logitech looks fine with little pictures in the corner uh, of the frame, but blown it, but blown up 1920 by 1080. It doesn't fare well as the camera within a, with a large sensor. Yeah. Yep. No, I hear you. Uh, let's see. It says, yeah, you can get some great led lights cheap, um, on Amazon. Yeah, I have some, um, but I really like the, um, I, what I really like about the, um, I like the aperture lights. They're a little bit more pricey, not much. You can buy the smaller ones on Amazon, pretty inexpensive. I think you were saying like 150 bucks or so. Yeah, for right around that money. But I wanna make sure they have the remotes <laughs> that I can just turn on and off because they're gonna be up and out of my way. And once they're up there and I wanna get the nice soft boxes so it really washes really nice. And I wanna be able to control the, the brightness of it. And I also wanna, um, this, this big one is just daylight where they make some that are a mix of daylight and tungsten or just tungsten. I want to get a mix so I can blend it right. Um, so I, I, I've had such good luck with the aperture lights that I might just go with those. Cause I can get those on Amazon for not too much more than what you just suggested. Um, uh, cause I got, I want something with remotes that I can just turn them on, turn them off. I don't want to set them up. I want to leave them always plugged in. I don't want to running on batteries. I want them running off AC power. And I just want to be able to turn it on, jump in front of the camera and rock and roll where right now I got to do a lot of setup to do this. And it, and you know, for what I want to be doing coming up, I can't do that, but I'm going to look at Amazon too. So thanks for the tip. Yeah, I have to fiddle with the ISO as well, Deer Creek. Yeah, the uh, like I said, the ISO settings in the Sony and the Canon are way, way different. Way different. Um, they say the Sony is much, much better in lower light because of the larger sensor, and I would agree. But the ISO, it seems, get at least right now, that I got to turn it up quite a bit more to get the same picture results as I was getting with the Canon and a much lower ISO. Now, I think some of that has to do with the lens because I'm not really comparing apples to apples because I wasn't using the same lens. Um, but I'll get it all dialed in. I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> it may kill me in the process, but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> uh, Johnny says, I have LED lights he's got from Ikea. Uh, they cost around 45 bucks. We have an Ikea here too, Johnny. I might check those out as well. Um, did you guys hear the Studio One audio okay? I mean, I know you can see it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were able to hear it okay. I can go back to my, oops, my main screen here. There we go. I can take off my headphones. So let's see. Uh, yeah, Deer Creek says, don't bypass the, uh, the settings, um, your white balance as all that can make a huge difference to all manual adjustment, focus, etc. Yeah. All my, I've always, since I started learning, I do everything in manual. I don't do automatic anything. The only thing that I, <clears throat> that I didn't do today when I normally would set up for a video shoot, I would, um, I have a little gray card. I would shoot a photo and I would do a custom auto wipe, a custom white balance, Right now I'm doing it in auto because I didn't do that before I sat down here. Uh, but everything else is manual. This is an autofocus lens, but 
I'm sitting in one spot. It's not, you know, it's, but every, I do everything in manual <clears throat> and that's what makes it a little bit more challenging as you know, because there's a lot more settings you have to understand when you put it in auto, everything's kind of done. And sometimes that can work okay, but all the guys that really know what they're doing, they all say the same thing, do everything in manual mode and understand all the different aspects of what these settings do. And once you get it dialed in, it's dialed in <clears throat> because once I get this setup that you see here dialed in, the settings are not going to change. It's always the same. I sit here, it's all in the same environment. I only got to dial it in once, you know, for this environment here. So I'll get it figured out. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Tony says Studio One looks great. Okay, yeah, I, I went back out of that. You were able to hear it. Uh, Edgar says, yeah, after looking at the DAW, the video quality is not an improvement. Yep. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, Deer Creek says Sony to Canon is like Gibson to Fender. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess it depends on what model, right? What model can, oh, I lost this damn, damn chat again. It, I guess it depends on what model, um, you're using, you know, the Canons are great, but see, here's the other problem too. Again, I don't know, maybe Deer Creek and Johnny Lipshank, a couple of you guys may want to know. I wasn't just, I didn't just dump this, the Canon for the Sony because of the picture quality. Cause as I said, all the video on my website is all done with the Canon and it shoots beautiful video. Here's the problem with the Canon, especially until you get up into the real high end Canons, the four and $5,000 models, which is, is too rich for my blood. When you want to do what I'm doing right now with a DSLR live streaming, you plug it through an HDMI cable into a capture card. We talked a little earlier about the Elgato capture card into your computer. Your camera needs to have what is called a clean HDMI output. And what that means is for people that don't know is that whenever you, um, you know, all the, when you look at your little screen on the back of your camera, all your little settings, your battery settings, your ISO settings, your F-stop settings, all the information is displayed on your screen. You can usually turn it off on the screen, but it but it goes across the HDMI cable and on the Canon, you can't shut it off. So if I was streaming with this Canon, you would see me, but then you would also see above my head, you would see the settings for my camera and it's not clean HDMI. <clears throat> Most of the Canon cameras don't have that. Some of the Canon Rebel Canon, Canon, Canon cameras, which are a little bit lower level, they have it only if you turn off autofocus which doesn't work for me when I'm trying to record a band and I'm in the band and I'm not doing the focusing. I need the camera to autofocus. I can't be on manual focus. And as soon as you step out of frame, everything is blurry. So the Canon's only on certain models. You have to turn off autofocus to get a clean HDMI. If you have autofocus on, it's not clean HDMI. That means when you go to stream, you won't get a clean picture like I'm getting right now. That was the biggest reason why I dumped the Canon was because I knew <clears throat> there were a couple other reasons I, I, I had learned when I was filming my bands. There were a couple of other limitations there as well, but I knew I wanted to upgrade my webcam to a DSLR. Not so much just for my, um, for live streaming, I need to clean HDMI, but I also wanted to use it for when I record all my um, courses, all my training courses, um, all, you know, all the stuff for YouTube. Without a clean HDMI, you can't do that. Right. So that was the biggest reason why I dumped the, the Canon. It just didn't have the clean HDMI. The other problem with the Canon camera or the other limitation that I had <clears throat> is that um, all these DSLR cameras, they only record up to 29 minutes and then they shut off. You have to turn them on and off. They internally, they're only, they have a, a recording limitation, mean continuous recording. So, for example, if you want to record your, your band, you could record for 29 minutes and you have to walk over to the camera, turn it off, wait a couple of seconds and hit record again. And then you can record for another 29 minutes. That's kind of a drag when you're, you know, when you're in a band or if you're trying to record a gig and if you're not behind the camera, that's a problem. Number one. So then I figured out, and then also too, with the Canon camera, they tended when you would record for more than 30 or 40 minutes, they would tend to overheat and shut the camera off where the Sony doesn't overheat nearly as much. The other way around that <clears throat> is to not record internally to the camera, but to record to an external recorder, a hard disk recorder, like an SSD drive, which I wanted to do, because then I could record for two hours straight and never have to shut the camera off. But once again, you have to do it through the HDMI cable, and if you don't have a clean HDMI signal, 
then you get, you know, it doesn't work. So I needed, first and foremost, a clean HDMI signal, not only for my band, but to do live streams and to do stuff for my, you know, home recording made easy. So that the Canon had to go for that reason. The reason why I picked the Sony was because I wanted to go to a mirrorless camera with a larger sensor because they typically are much better in low light. And because I'm in a studio, which the lights are typically a little more dim and I don't want everything to be, you know, full on lights all the time. I can't work that way. I wanted something that was better in low light. Um, and so, and it has the clean HDMI and a couple of other features in it, which is why I picked up the Sony. So yes, Sony and Canon, they're both great cameras, but it, but it all depends on what you're going to use it for and what some one will have a certain set of features that the other one doesn't and vice versa. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Studio One sounds great, sounds great. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we know that's going to work. Okay. And I'm still doing all this in 4K, so I'm more interested to see if my computer can handle it. My computer can handle it so far, which is great. Johnny says, a lot of fun, a lot of work, and a lot of money. Yep, yes to all the, <laughs> yes to every one of those points, Johnny, unfortunately, especially the third one. <clears throat> oh, Deer Creek says, you had, you're having some storms going through the Midwest. You had to refresh a few times. Yeah, I'm watching the stream on my MacBook Pro here, and it doesn't seem to be uh, stuttering at all. It seems to be going really smooth, um, and the stream health looks okay, so it just might be your area. Um, stay safe in all the storms. I hear there's a lot of tornadoes going through the, the that part of the country. Oops, I may have lost my. Deer Creek says. Deer Creek says. Don't forget external on off rem remotes. <clears throat> I use that for my wife when recording using a lamp by the door. What do you mean external on off remotes? I don't know what that means. You mean the camera remotes? Can you help me with that? Maybe there's something I don't know about that I need to have. <laughs> yeah, the Deer Creek says you are, <clears throat> are you looking for the photo blurry backgrounds? Your background is pretty defined as well now too, like a camcorder webcam. Yeah. Um, the, um, yeah, and that has to do with the lens, right? It has to do with the lens and the and the and the f-stop. And so that this lens, it'll be interesting to see when I get my lens on Tuesday. Um, I'm getting a 16 millimeter um, Sigma lens, which is the same kind of lens I was using on the Canon series. And those things were, and it has a 1.4 aperture, which means it should look beautiful in low light. Um, and you get a nice blurry background. Uh, with that again if you watch my videos on home recording made easy everything behind me has got this nice little bokeh effect which i really like which i'm not getting right now <clears throat> and i think that has to do with the f-stop and so it is it has to do with part of the lens and whatnot but i'm gonna i'm gonna blur out the background a little bit i'm probably not gonna go too crazy with it i'm just gonna try to soften it up a little so it's not so well defined at least that's what i'm gonna try to do <laughs> Uh, so the Sony doesn't have the flip screen, does it? No, that's the one downfall about the Sony that you can't flip around and see what you're doing. But I've already rectified that again. I mean, I don't know how much you guys really want to know about this shit, but, <laughs> um, I bought an external recorder for, because one of the other limitations, as I was saying was the record time is only 29 minutes. And if you want to record continuous longer, you have to do it externally with the HDMI, the clean HDMI. So I bought what's called an Atomos Ninja 5 recorder, which sits on top of the Sony camera that I can flip around and I can frame myself. It's got a 500 gig um, hard drive on it. Last night I recorded our band rehearsal for two and a half hours in 4K. It recorded continuously for the whole two and a half hours to that hard drive, one file, dumped it on my computer in the Final Cut Pro, and it looks awesome. So I wasn't so worried about the flip screen because I knew I had to get the external recorder and I bought a recorder monitor. It, it was an extra expense I didn't need on the Canon. Um, but again, I couldn't record externally with the Canon because of the clean HDMI. But it doesn't have the flip screen. You're right. <clears throat> uh, no, the Canon 1780D do not offer a clean HDMI. Now, and I know this because I tested it before I, you know, believe me, I didn't take anybody's word for it. I actually tested it. It does not. 
only if you shut off autofocus, and I think that's on the 70D. So if you if you turn off autofocus, I believe it's clean HDMI, but I, I don't want that. For this, it's okay, because I'm not really moving too much. Um, but, but other things, I wanted to have autofocus. So um, you have to really check and make sure, and the way, you, the way you check is you take your HDMI, just plug it into a television set, and see and see what's on the screen, and and you can see the all the 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 autofocus boxes for Canon. You can see the information. It's it's not it's not clean HDMI. Which I didn't even know I needed that <laughs> until I started getting into streaming. To be honest, um, so I'm not sure. It, it is a popular vlog camera, I guess. I think what they do is they shut off the autofocus. I think I think that's what they do. Because it doesn't work. And then I called B&H Photo, which is where I bought my Sony, and I actually talked to one of their experts, one of their techs, and they told me the same thing. The Canon Mark Mark V, or the next step up, the next step up above the Canon 80Ds, those have clean HDMI. Those don't have a flip screen either, which is kind of strange, but they're $5,000 cameras. And that was just a little, four to 5000 a little out of my price range. The Sony was only... Uh, 2000 and it came with a kit lens the the next step up in canons just the bodies alone started at three grand and i just couldn't spend that much money <clears throat> so anywho <laughs> let's see oh external remote switches uh turn off the lights on and off oh i see what you mean i know what you mean now yeah 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 yeah. you're right but i don't i don't want to turn them on and off i want to be able to dim them and brighten them <clears throat> i want to be able to control them i just don't want to turn it on and off because where they're going to be positioned it's going to be a pain in the in the rear end for me to have to go up there and adjust the lights i want to be able to um turn them on and off obviously i want to be able to dim them and change the balancing right from my chair so I can see how it affects. I don't want to have to go up, adjust the light, run back to the chair, go up, adjust the light, run back to the chair. I want to try to get it so it's all set up. <clears throat> yes, B&H has uh, been very helpful. I bought all my stuff there. Number one, because they support their product. And if you try something you don't like, it, you can send it back which you could do on Amazon as well, but the prices are the same as Amazon and you could talk to one of their experts and, and they, they helped me, you know, with the clean HDMI thing, they were helping me and they helped me choose between a different so a different um, couple of Sony cameras. And I looked at some other ones too, it wasn't just Sony, um, but they helped me a lot. So they're, they're really good. Um, they're, they're really, they're really um, intelligent and smart and they know their products. So, and I need that help because I'm still new. <clears throat> So that's a, yeah, how many, we still got about 10 people here. That's cool. Well, yeah, I just wanted to jump on here and try this. We've been streaming now for probably <clears throat> maybe close to an hour. It doesn't seem like the stream has, um, has buffered anymore since I changed those settings in OBS, which is great. Um, it looks like it's working okay. Um, just looking back at the stream on my laptop, let me turn up my brightness here a little so I can see it better. Um, yeah, the quality is not yet what I want it to be. And again, I don't know, I know it's a combination of things. So I'm going to get it dialed in. Don't you worry. <laughs> Believe me, after all this money I spent, I'm going to get it. If those guys can get it uh, on, the, on, on, on YouTube, then I can get it too. You know what I mean? It, it can't be that difficult. How do I turn down my brightness here? There we go. Turn it down a little bit again. So that's it. <clears throat> Yep, I see that Deer Creek. I saw those guys, and I, I've been watching their stuff too. Um, seems like a large musician. Seems like a large musician YouTube crowd is jumping on the video wagon, and that's great. Yeah, well, video's everything today. You know, it, it is. Um, you know, and it's like anything. I, I want my stuff to look good. I want it to look as the best I can make it look. You know, I, you know, I, this is my job. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, within reason. You know, I, I can't go crazy. Um, but you know, it's just like anything, right? It's, I, I, I want it, to, I want my stuff to look good and I want to, you know, I want to be able to produce better content for you guys. Um, and you know, people that don't know who I am, they come to my website for the first time. I want them to, I want them to look at it and go, wow, this guy's a professional. He knows what he's doing, you know? And some of that is, 
you know, like it's just, again, it's just like mixing. I tell people, you're not going to learn all this stuff in a 10 minute YouTube video. You have to put the time in, do the research, do some experimentation <clears throat> and, a, you know, buy stuff from people where you can try stuff out and return it to get the right combination of equipment that you need. Um, and a lot of times you got to spend a lot of time and sometimes you got to spend some money if you want to do it right. You can, you could do anything the cheap way and you could do something that's certainly acceptable. But if you want to compete at a, at a different level, you not only have to educate yourself on what to do and how to do it and how to use the equipment, right? But you got to spend the money to get the equipment, you know? And, and again, I, I, I must have messed around when I first started shooting video with cheap lighting for years and had no idea why I couldn't get. And then I finally said, I don't know what the hell the difference is between, the, again, that, that one aperture light I'm talking about. That's a $700 light just for the light. And then the dome is another 200 bucks. That's a $900 setup. And I always thought, well, isn't an LED an LED? What's the difference, right? What would be the difference between LEDs that you'd buy on Amazon, the small little panels versus that? What What's the difference? But when I kept going to all these YouTube channels, guys that really do this stuff, they're all, all using that light. Every single one of them was using that same light. And I said, well, I'm going to try it. So I called B&H Photo, had him send me that. And the first video I shot, I did nothing different but use that light and put it in the right place. And the video, it was like night and day. And I said, I, I still don't even understand it um, technically, how, what the hell the difference is. There must be quality in the LEDs. There must be, right? There's got to be something that's different about it. I mean, but so then I, that, and that's what, that's what turned me on to, hey, it's the lighting. And, you know, I'm going to show you something. Let me, um, if you guys care. I know Deer Creek Audio cares. I think Johnny Lipsham's still around. The rest of you probably bailed out and said, if he's not going to show me how to mix a kick drum, I'm not going to listen to him. <laughs> That's not what this video is, guys. But I want to show you something. I, I don't know. I'm going to try to bring, I just want to show you a still of the, of, the, of the thing that I shot last night. With this same camera, uh, again, I was using a 24 millimeter Sony lens. This is a 16 millimeter Sony lens, but it's the same F stop and everything. This is just a wider angle. But I wanted to see if I can, again, I don't know if this is going to crap out the live stream because the video is real intensive on the computer. But I, I just want to see if we, if you could even just see, I wanted to show you a still of what this Sony camera is capable of when you have the right lighting. And again, I don't know how it's going to come across on UP on, on uh, OBS here. Hope I didn't screw up my uh, project here. Hold on. Stand by. Because I shut it down when I was rendering <laughs> to do this live stream, so I don't know. Let me hold on a minute. I don't know if. Okay, if the stream goes if the stream goes down, guys, I apologize. Let me just show you, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully I'm, I'm still live streaming right now. I don't know. Okay. So I don't know if you guys, let me see if it's, if am I still streaming? <laughs> okay. It looks like I am. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see. Here is just again, just a still, a video pause. There's no color grading. There's no nothing with this. This is the same camera that I shot. You can just see that you you could probably see the the quality difference. At least I can see it on my screen. It's night and day compared to what you're looking at. What I think you're looking at over OBS right now. Can you see that? I don't know. Let's see. You're still live. Okay, great. Start running a cowbell, Johnny says. Yeah. Uh, Heel Flip said it's all good to hear about. Cool. Yeah, I hope you guys like this stuff. I mean, some of you won't. And you know, like I said, it's, you know, not a big deal. So anyway, here is, here is on Final Cut Pro. Here's the video quality with that same camera shot 24 hours ago. And I, I would play it back. I'm afraid to play it back because it might it may just crash the computer. But I But you guys can just see 
the video quality of it is tons better than what I'm getting right now. The difference is I was using the two big soft dome lights. The camera was positioned in a different part of the room, but only maybe 10 feet behind me, <clears throat> but I had the right lighting and everything. And there's no color grading. And I saw, I got to color grade this a little bit. I mean, you can see on my screen here, there's, there's very, there's really no color grading on this at all. Um, this is just shot right out of the camera. That shot at an ISO, I think of 2000, um, with an f-stop of uh, four or three, three point five or four. That was as fast as I is that particular lens lens would go. <clears throat> so that so that is you know that's one of the cam that is the Sony camera shooting a band rehearsal last night. So if I could get my webcam to look like that, the quality of that, I'm where I need to be. And it doesn't look like that right now, just by looking at it side by side. And I, I just got to think it's the lighting. It's the only thing that's different is the lighting. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> there's nothing else that's different. Um, and yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, um, no color grading. There's nothing done to this. I just, is just what came in off the camera. And you're right, Deer Creek, the white balance is a little off on that because, um, I didn't do a custom white balance. It was on auto white balance last night because I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see how the Sony um, auto white balance would work. Just curious. Um, but when I use my Canon, I used to put the gray card in and I used to take a picture beforehand and use a custom white balance and I'll start doing that. Um, but anyway, that's that's that. So that that's so what I'm trying to achieve is I'm trying to achieve, um, you know, this look right here with this webcam up here, you know, that, that, you know, that, that's what I'm trying to do. So hopefully I, hopefully I'll be able to get there at one point. So I'm going to just close this. And again, I'll play, and I'll probably play with the resolution as well. There's my crappy desktop picture. Let me uh, switch scenes again. So there you go. So that, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. Oh, you said my white balance is off now. The skins are, well, you know what it is. Some of it has to do with some of this crappy lighting too. Like if I dim some of these, and again, I, I can't tell. One of the problems that I'm having too is I'm looking at this on a monitor and I don't know if the monitor is calibrated right. So part of this is I'm not sure you know, like I just dimmed some of these lights. You might be able to tell in a second where now it's not as exposed. Some of these table lights that I have. And if I turn them up, your my face gets really blown out. But part of the problem too is I have to make sure that my monitor, my, my screen here is calibrated. So what I'm looking at is what you're going to see and what is what's, what's going to come across is, you know what I mean? Um, that's some of what I need to do too. So... Yeah, so that that's that's the dealio, man. So I don't know if you guys have any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. I know I've been on here a little more than an hour. I appreciate you uh, joining my experiment. If you're still here and you're part of MixingMadeEasy.net, tomorrow is our coaching call. You guys all know that, and I'll be using this setup, and it'll look about this good because I won't be able to improve anything between now and tomorrow. But I'll get there. Don't you worry. It will happen sooner or later. Um, but if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask. And if not, I'm probably going to head out, head out, head out and, uh, you know, go eat some dinner and just try to relax for the rest of the night. So that's really it guys. So thanks again so much for, uh, you know, spending a, an hour with me and listening to me ramble about my video stuff. Um, I'll do more of this stuff in the future if you guys want me to. And, uh, yeah, any of you guys have any, uh, tips, you know, thanks Deer Creek for sharing all your knowledge. That's very, very helpful. Um, I'm going to continue to learn and I'm going to continue to, uh, play around with this stuff and I'm, uh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. So it looks just the way I want it to look. Um, but I just have to, I got to mess around with it and I got to, uh, and I, before I even change my lighting, it's going to be interesting when I get that lens on Tuesday, that Sigma lens is, I think is going to be much better than the lens I'm using now. I'll bet you the quality is going to be a lot better too. 
So I'm probably not going to change anything else other than the lens. And then I'm probably going to jump on and do another live stream for a little bit. And then I'm going to watch back the both of them and see how much does the lens really change anything, you know? Uh, Robert, oh, I got some more questions. Sorry, guys, I didn't see that. Uh, off topic, do you still recommend console one? Um, I no, yeah, I, I used it for a little bit. I sold it. I didn't like the workflow. It didn't work for me. Um, I know people that do use it that really like it. It wasn't for me. Um, just didn't like the knobs, the layout. It, wa it wasn't in my bag. So I wouldn't recommend it. Not because I don't think it's a great product. It really depends on your workflow. Um, and I didn't, if you were going to do something hands-on, get a studio live mixer. That's what I would, or fader port. That's what I would tell you to do. Uh, let's see. Robert says, do you teach one-on-one? -on -one? I sure do. If you go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and go to the services page, you will see a bunch of videos and a bunch of services. And one of those videos, um, I uh, have a video talking about my one-on-one -on -one private instruction. So go check that out. I do. I'd be love to meet you and love to work with you. Uh, Johnny says, you and I should have a catch up on Skype. Yes, we need to do that very soon, Johnny. We need to catch up. It's been a while. It feels like I just spoke to you yesterday, but no, it's been months, I think, <laughs> at least a month. So we need to catch up. You're, we will. Um, King KR8, should I use pink noise for levels or just use my ears? I would just use your ears. I mean, pink noise is great for certain things. I don't use it. I just use my ears, personally. Deer Creek says, more videos on videos, please. Yes, I, w I promise I will. I will do some videos on it. Um, it'll be multiple videos cause I'll do little topics. Um, and I'm going to try, I'm starting to just, you know, gather all that stuff in my head and trying to figure out how do I want to map it out and how do I want to talk about it? Because I want to teach it to the, to a very beginner like myself. I, again, I, I'm not an expert at this and some of the information I give may not work for everybody. And I want to make sure I'm trying to give as much accurate information as I can. And I want to share my experience and just say, this is what I did. This is what worked for me. This is what didn't work for me. Um, and then, you know, go from there. So I will, I, I will, I will, I will. I promise I will. Um, Cause it's something that interests me too. And when I try to teach something and talk about something, I learn, and in essence, I learn stuff along the way too. And, and I really need to learn this better. I need to learn it better. Um, but yeah, I will. I promise. I promise I will. Uh, Dear Craig says, uh, good. I, you saved me $600 on console one. I trust your opinion and workflow. Yeah, it's not a bad product. Um, Again, whenever you're going to try something like that, I would just suggest you either do one of two things, either buy it used that you can flip it again and get your money back, or at least get most of your money back or buy it somewhere where you can try it and you have a, a return policy like Sweetwater. I know Musicians Friends, I think does that as well, um, where you can try something. And if you don't like it within 30 days or so, you could send it back. Maybe you'll pay a restocking fee. Um, and then, you know, whatever little money you might lose, if you don't get a hundred percent of your refund back, I just consider that like a rental fee. It's just like I'm renting like the lens on my camera that we're, you're looking at me now. I rented it from a, a website called um, borrowlenses.com. It cost me $50 for the week to try out this lens. The only reason why I tried it out is because it's a, I wanted to see if the focal length was going to be what I needed for my live streams. I didn't want to spend $800 on this lens and then find out it's not what I need. So I rented it, you know, so um, yeah. So same thing with audio gear. Try to Try to get it to where you can return it. Or buy it at a good enough price that you can flip it and at least try to get most of your money back. Um, but it's not that it's a bad product. It just didn't. It just didn't feel. It just didn't work right for my workflow. But then again, I had the same exact experience with the Studio Live. I mean, you guys saw I had that big, gigantic Studio Live, and it's an awesome mixer. It's freaking unbelievable. But for the more I used it, and the more I wanted to do certain things in my particular workflow. It didn't work for me as well as I would have thought it could have when I originally bought it. Nobody's fault. You don't know sometimes until you get it in there and you start doing stuff with it. And then you find out, oh, this works really good. But this part of it, oh, I really miss this. And for the studio live, I couldn't do the analog summing and the hardware the way I wanted to do it. It, just, it wasn't plug and play. Um, and so that was the biggest reason why I got rid of it. Um, as a live mixer, best mixer on the planet. Great. Um, doing basic stuff in a studio where you're not doing all this other hardware stuff and you're just doing mixing and the fader and the, um, the, the DAW control is fantastic. But 
for me, it just didn't work. Not that it's not a great mixer. I recommend the mixer all the time. It just didn't fit into my workflow. So that's how I feel about the console one as well. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Uh, Deer Creek says there are some photo YouTubers that are hilarious where I've learned quite a bit. Yeah, I watch a lot of those guys, too. I was watching, you know, Casey Neistat, who everybody knows. He's a vlogger. I was watching Peter McKinnon. He's a photographer, but a video guy as well. Um, and then there's other people, like I said, even less popular people. Um, for the live streaming thing, I recommend go watch ga gamers, guys that game and stream gaming online. Those guys got this thing dialed in. That's who I'm starting to watch now. I don't watch them playing the games. I watch them uh, when they talk about their gear. How did they set up? And a lot of those guys are using this camera, the a7 III. And that's one of the reasons why I bought it. Because, yes, you can go through and you can you can get other cameras to do the same thing. But, you know, part of it is, hey, you you know, I want to get there as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I, I have somewhat of a budget where I can buy a halfway decent camera. And I'm going to sell my Canon 80D to help pay for part of it. What are, what are they using? They're using the Sony a7 III? Great, I'm gonna get the Sony a7 III too. What lens are they using? I'll get that lens too, <laughs> you know? What lighting are they using? I'll get that lighting too. And if you get all the same stuff and you set it up the way they set it up, you should get very close to the same results, right? You should. So that's part of it. But yeah, I, I watch some of those, uh, those photo guys too. They are funny. <laughs> They're entertaining. Uh, King KR8, EQ or compression first? Uh, totally depends. Usually, compression. Usually. Um, but it depends on the track. It depends on what you're trying to do. Sometimes it's EQ, compression, then EQ, then compression. EQ, compressor, EQ, compressor. If the track's a mess and I got to fix it and then go fix it again, so it really depends. But usually for me, it's usually compression first and EQ. 80% of the time. But it depends. Uh, Deer Creek says, I think your lens is more defining your picture size. Your ISO white balance and focus are much more important. Yeah, I would agree. Um, the thing about the lens that I found, at least with my limited knowledge, um, with the Sigma lenses that I learned on my camera, the Sigma lenses for an affordable price, under $1,000 a lens, um, you can get very fast um, uh, apertures, f-stops. They're the only lens company that that I know, that I, in the research that I've done, where you could get like a 1.4, 1.8 f-stop, continuous f-stop, regardless of the focal length. That allows you to drop that ISO quite a bit to keep the picture nice and clean. And it really lets a lot of light in. And I found those lenses, the ones that I used on my Canon, it, it, it changed the game. I, again, the light was one big thing. And the second thing I found was when I bought my Canon, I had a, the regular 35 millimeter kit lens that came with it. Well, probably a couple hundred dollar lens. It looked okay. As soon as I put that Sigma lens on there, and at that time, that Sigma lens was a 24 millimeter. It was a $800, $900 lens, night and day. Nothing else in the camera changed, just changing the lens. It was a big difference. So the, they, they even say, again, and again, I'm, I don't know how true this is across the board, but they even say the lens is more important than the camera body. The camera body is important, certainly. The sensor, what you can do inside of the camera. But the, they'll all say you're better off buying a better lens and a cheaper camera body than a better camera and a cheaper lens. And I found that to be true on the Canon 80D. For me, again, I know I'm, I'm with my limited knowledge that it, that's what helped me. So um, right now I'm using very inexpensive kit lenses that came with the Sony, just trying out some different things. I've only had the Sony three days, um, but when I get that Sigma lens next week, I'm going to be interested to see that because I have Sigma lenses for my Canon and they're awesome. I for me, I love them, so I'd be interested to see what 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 matters there. But you're right; it's a combination of everything. But the glass has a lot to do with it, from what my experience. Uh, Deer Creek says, Johnny Guy lights his fader port over his studio live. I know he does. Me and him have had some conversations about that. He does. Uh, again, for the same reason, his workflow, the fader port is more uh, conducive. And the fader port controls a lot more things in Studio One than the Studio Live does. Because the Studio Live wasn't built to be a DAW control. That was an afterthought. It was built to be a live mixer and an audio interface. It really wasn't made 
you know, it wasn't designed around controlling Studio One. That was an, an afterthought. It was a side piece where the fate where so the certain things in Studio One you can't control on the Studio Live. But on the fader port, totally different ball game. That was designed to run almost every single aspect of Studio One. So for what Johnny does, that was more conducive to his workflow. So yeah, I can so he would rather have a fader port 16 than a Studio Live 16 um, for his workflow. Because he doesn't do a lot of recording. He only does uh I think he just records a few in inputs at a time. He doesn't need 16 or 32 inputs all at once. So that makes sense for him. Hey, Donnie, what's up, brother? I'm getting ready to get off, but thanks for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, for the coaching call. Let's see. Uh, Deer Creek says, better mic, cheaper preamp, analogness. Better mic, cheaper preamp. <clears throat> yeah. I, oh, you mean about the lens and the camera body, that kind of comparison? I, I would say that analogy is probably pretty much the same. <clears throat> You're better off having a better microphone, not a crappy preamp, but a, a more affordable preamp than having... Um, a high-end preamp and a cheaper microphone, for sure, for, w without a shadow of a doubt, now that I'm saying that out loud, absolutely. So, for example, a lot of people will ask me about the PreSonus interfaces. You know, these, you, you know, are, are the preamps any good? Are they as good as the Apollo or some of the, the Fireface interfaces? Um, I want a better vocal sound. Should I go out and get, you know, a Neve 1073 preamp or something of the equivalent, spend a lot of money on a preamp, and then they're using a, a $200 microphone? Um, and I'm like, no, you don't need to do that. Your preamp in your Studio 192, for example, is just fine. Just as good as the Apollo to my ear. They're fantastic preamps. Even the preamps in, the, you know, the i2s, you know, those are not bad preamps. Are they Neve quality preamps? No, of course not. But you're better off running, and this is an example, a thousand dollar or fifteen hundred dollar nice large diaphragm condenser microphone into a PreSonus interface, recording that, as opposed to running a ninety nine dollar microphone into a Neve ten seventy three. You're going to get better results with the better microphone, most more times than not. So yeah, I, I would I would um I would uh, I I would agree with that. So you know. You know, so it's same thing with the camera. The, the camera body is great and the sensor size and all that stuff, all that techie stuff matters. But if you put, not not that the, not that the kit lenses, the inexpensive le lenses are bad. Like I said, I showed you that Final Cut Pro shot or that, that, that video shot there a little while back. That was all shot with a, with a kit lens. But if I put, a, if I have that same exact lighting and setup and same camera position, with all the camera settings in the camera exactly the same, and if I take off that $200 lens and I put on a $900 Sigma lens, it's going to look better. It absolutely will. It's not to say you couldn't compensate inside the camera settings for the cheaper lens to get closer. You can. You can, just like with a preamp and a microphone. But, you know, the again, just being a student of this, all the professionals say, Get a better, get better glass, better lenses, spend your money there as opposed to the top end camera body. If you can't buy both, if you can't have top of the line camera body, top of the line lenses, um, reduce the camera body a little bit and put your money in the lenses. That's what's going to make the difference. Um, and then also obviously having proper lighting and then understanding your camera and all that stuff. But yeah. So yeah, right, Deer Creek, it's pretty much just like the audio side, right? It's just like microphones and preamps and plugins and analog gear versus plugins. And is, you know, w there was a lot of debate about my SSL uh, channel strip shootout a couple of weeks ago where we looked at all these channel strips and, you know, there were a lot of people, you know, you know, uh, defending their flag, so to speak. And at the end of the day, if you don't know how to use any of those, it doesn't matter. Can I make all those channel strips sound exactly the same? Not exactly the same, but close enough? Sure you could. Sure you could. It, it all becomes down to what do you like better? What's your personal preference? And most importantly, do you know how to use the damn channel strip? 
it doesn't matter if you it, whether it's the universal audio one or the plug-in alliance one or the solid state logic one or the waves one or whatever other third party sh offshoot it, it makes no difference if you don't understand how to use a compressor and eq how to push those kinds of plugins understand those kinds of plugins and how to use them you will never maximize how what those plugins can do if you don't understand the inner workings of how it all works conceptually right and again, it's the same thing with all this camera video stuff. Same exact thing. It's just a different uh, discipline. Different discipline. So, anyway. <laughs> um, okay, guys. It's almost an hour and a half. I have to get going. But thank you so much for hanging out. I know this was a last-minute thing. Uh, thank you for uh, watching my test. The streaming, at least we know it works. I can stream in 4K and the stream is not going to crash. So that's going to be good. That'll at least get me going in the right direction. And uh, we'll do more of these uh, impromptu stuff as I get new equipment and more things figured out. And, um, and I'll help anyone that needs any help. And I'll share my experiences if you share your experiences with me. And uh, that'll be it. So and until uh, next time, again, thank you so, so much for all your support, you know, for all your support. And for supporting everything I do at Home Recording Made Easy, MixingMadeEasy.net, YouTube. Oh, and I was talking about... Um, we're going to be doing a lot more live stream stuff. Yes, there's going to be, once I get this all figured out, I'm going to be doing, um, live mixing demonstration stuff, live stream stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot of that stuff, uh, very, very soon where we're going to do full mixes, not all at once. I'll break them down a song. Maybe we'll do a, we'll probably do, um, over a four week period. One week we'll do drums, then I'll do Q and A. Next week we'll do the bass and the guitars, and I'll do a Q and A. Next week we'll do vocals, Q and A. You get it? We'll do that for four or five weeks. We'll do an entire song, um, and this way I can do some really focused training with you guys in a live stream format, and also do live interaction with you guys as well, showing you uh, some different concepts on how to do, um, how to achieve the same result, and maybe some different ways. Um, and going to do more and that's going to be probably a weekly show. So I'm going to get back into a weekly live stream. It'll be the same date and time every week and they'll be recorded. Um, don't know when it's all going to be. I'm working on all the details, but this is one of the reasons why I'm trying to get hip to all this stuff. Um, cause I want to present to you the best video and audio quality I can for training. Um, and you guys, and some of the, most of this will be free. Um, some of it might be paid as webinars. We're going to see as we go along. Um, and some of it will also be kind of a precursor to where if you like that kind of training, um, it's going to be kind of what I'm doing in mixingmadeeasy.net, but it's not going to go nearly as deep as mixingmadeeasy.net because those folks are paying for a membership and they're getting everything. This is going to be kind of dialed back a little bit, but also going to be very valuable for people who, um, who can't become a member, doesn't have the budget, needs some free training. So we're going to do some live stream stuff, a lot, not some, a lot of live stream stuff. We're going to be doing that stuff. That's my goal this year is to, is to get that all dialed in. But until I understand what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> I don't want to turn that product on yet. So stay tuned because that's all coming. I hope you guys will all be a part of it because it, it'd be fun. I think we'll have a good we'll have a good time together. Okay, so that's it for now. I will see you guys soon. And if you're at mixingmadeeasy.net, I will see you uh, tomorrow night for our coaching call. Uh, we have our mixing contest winner. Got some cool plugins to give away. And this time around, we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to critique some of the members' mixes live, which you guys have been asking for. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but if you're not a, ma a member of MixingMadeEasy.net, you won't be able to get in. It's, it's for members only. It's private. It's not open to the public. So if you want to know what that's all about, go over to MixingMadeEasy.net and sign up today for less than 50 cents a day, and you're going to get the best mixing training on the planet, and you're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with me. Just ask guys like Donnie, um, and um, it'll be cool. So go check it out, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.